Welcome to Oracle for Startups. I'm Whitney Dermick, and today I am joined by Igor Jablikov. Igor is the CEO of Pryon, a startup that helps companies read, organize, and retrieve information. Igor, thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. So Igor, you are no stranger to the entrepreneurial space. Do you want to share a little bit of your startup background? Sure. I actually started my career as a research engineer and then departed when IBM was not being as aggressive as I wanted them to be to go into the AI space with early Watson. And so I created a venture backed company and it ended up becoming Amazon's first ever AI related acquisition, which birthed what many people now know as Alexa. That's an incredible uh, bona fide to have under your belt. But let's talk Pryon. Pryon is an AI-based platform that helps companies specifically with knowledge management. When did you recognize that this was something that was needed? Right. So wh while all of us had these great AI assistants in our homes, in our automobiles, and on mobile, I, I decided to catch our own football in that, the, that it would be really nice to have that same natural experience you know, to, to running more enterprise style workloads, but it wasn't going to come in the same way, uh, you know, uh, as, as a device sitting in our kitchens or by our bedsides. Uh, and so knowing that, you know, the enterprises are going to have much more robust uh, requirements for accuracy, scale, security, uh, and, and latency. And so when we started looking at that, right, that there wouldn't be AI assistants that are prevalent, what's one um, problem that that is common to all of these enterprises across industries that they haven't really solved yet, and that's knowledge management. And the reason for that is is bits and pieces of what they need, in, uh, you know, workers need, uh, and and the content that customers need are strewn about everywhere. They're in SharePoints, they're in S3 buckets, they're in applications like Oracle Financials and the like, they're in SAP, they're in SharePoints, they're in wikis like Confluence. And so there wasn't one source of truth. And we saw that uh, being an opportunity to essentially harmonize all of this under a single natural language interface. So for instance, if I'm a customer service rep, I'm probably getting a lot of the same questions over and over. Would Pryon help me find easier answers and optimize that process? Absolutely. Instead of doing uh, a, an enterprise search where you'll type in some keywords and you get a list of documents, you know, you probably are putting your, your client on hold. And for that two minutes, you're in terror trying to speed read what the possible solution might be. You know, think of the AI then being augmented intelligence, kind of helping you through that journey of, of, of helping your client. Because when they first come in through the IVR, maybe it's a Genesis IVR or something of that sort, it could attempt to answer the question directly or a chatbot can attempt to answer the question directly before it ever gets to you. But it, if it does uh, open up a ticket, the minute you open up a ticket, the AI can attempt to automatically answer it or if the support email comes in. But then if, if, if uh, it finally gets to you and it's a more complex problem, you can actually be querying the AI while you're working with the client and it can be giving you possible solutions uh, quickly and rapidly while you're engaging them with the phone. So nobody has to be on hold and this just increases customer sat and it really you know, reduces your workload and, and stress level. Right. So do you agree that there needs to be a bit of a balance between the AI and the human side? There's really only so much that an AI can solve for. Uh, ultimately, there needs to be that human connection when we're solving problems for customers. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I completely agree. I know, um, you know, so many people uh, think it's like science fiction. Oh my gosh, AI is coming. All of us are going to be out of work at some point. And, and I think that's, that's hogwash. I think humans are still the center of creativity, of innovation, of intuition. And I would rather think of it as a partnership with the machine uh, and not as, as anything that displaces anybody. If you think about this, right, uh, at the dawn of the pandemic, we had record low unemployment, but you would have said that we were at, at, at the top of, of, um, of what humanity had as technologies. And so why was why was unemployment so low then? Well, that's because all companies, you know, need, need to generate higher levels of productivity. And so if you think about ahead for the next 20 years, we're not going to be able to increase the size of the human population by 10x 
in order to have 10x more productivity, we're going to need machines to help us with that. So a strong AI like Pryon can actually be a complement rather than a threat to the workforce. Uh, absolutely. And, and I think when you show this to folks, you can just see the a, a sigh of relief because they'll actually show you, hey, look, look what it actually takes us to actually look for this information and 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 find these answers to plow in the into the workflows or or to process certain types of documents. The fact that they can immediately save 15 minutes, two hours, uh, or up to two hours per day per employee, that's not time that's wasted. That's not time that people are going to be laid off. That's time that they can actually work on work on more complex problems. So it's a win-win for everybody. So I think terms like AI, machine learning, natural language processing, they get tossed around so liberally in the startup world. What do you think makes an AI solution legitimate? Yeah, that's a, that's a tough call. Uh, that's a tough call uh, because I know a lot of startups just put .ai at the end of their URLs and suddenly they think that <laughs> they know what they're doing. I don't know how to describe their legitimacy. I can tell you what describes ours. There's... Um, we build our own engine stack, the whole thing, soup to nuts, right? Because when you think of how Apple tends to solve problems in our personal lives, the fact that they can build the silicon all the way up to the operating system, all the way up to the applications that they host on top, this gives you the highest level of performance with the lowest possible power uh, use as well. And obviously, we're, we all need to be more uh, thoughtful about being as green as possible. And so same thing here, right? How do I get the highest level of performance vis-a-vis -vis accuracy while at the same time, you know, being able to, to meet the enterprise's conditions, um, you know, to thoughtfully operate in their environment. And for me, what makes a real AI company is your ability to make your own engines, not, not repurposing open source, not you know being a glorified integrator off the totality of things that exist in public cloud you can strategically leverage some but there at least has to be something unique that you can only buy from you that for me is is how i would separate the two the two camps I think that makes sense. And it's a great segue to enterprise technology. I heard you on our recent two minute podcast and you mentioned that Prion is taking a multi cloud approach. Why do you think multi cloud is a good fit for startups? Well, I mean, part of it is out of necessity. There just isn't enough resource to go around. All businesses are essentially reinventing themselves with AI. So the way that we leverage OCI is, is for training models that then get deployed uh, into production, uh, whether it's uh, entity extraction, whether it's optical character recognition uh, and, the, and the like. And so these scientists have to essentially you know, fan the world, <laughs> find spare GPU capacity, and then leverage it uh, to develop these models. Um, it seems um, um, what I would say heavy on the compute and heavy on, on what you would think on the green, but then you think about how much time we actually save uh, once these models are in production for these workers actually has a net reduction in carbon. Well, that's a win-win. Uh, I was going to ask where OCI fits in and if there's certain workloads that shine with Oracle Cloud. It sounds like that model training, high-performance compute is where it's shining for Prion. That's exactly right. And I think uh, Oracle's a leader in in um, having uh, moving to cloud applications, whereas a lot of folks, if you if you look at AWS, for instance, they, they may have a lot of the infrastructure components, but they don't have a lot of the applications. And obviously, the Oracle applications are prevalent throughout corporate uh, America and then certainly internationally as well. So at, at the right time, when we have to draw in more application centric data, um, for the uh, for the AI to uh, essentially leverage as part of its um, uh, knowledge management workflows, that tap is 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 going to be pretty important. And that takes a lot of cooperation. And speaking of which, Prion is a member of the Oracle Startup Program. How has that experience been? Have there been any highlights? No, I, I think what's the highlights is just the um, the team's willingness to essentially explore how we can work together even beyond the normal relationship that you would expect between a startup and, and a host uh, company such as Oracle, you know, for Oracle to leverage these type of technologies for its own workloads as well. Because I think then it just becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And then once, you know, you consider a big tech company as a patron of essentially outsource R&D, which is exactly what the startups are in, in such programs. And then when one has a hit and is relevant to the rest of their clients, Oracle can prove it out for themselves and then essentially run campaigns to say, hey, this helped our business in this particular area. 
we can go ahead and rinse repeat this to every one of our other clients and i think it just becomes a self fulfilling prophecy then yeah we call it a virtuous cycle of innovation so prion raised a major funding round this year first of all congratulations um what other exciting things are happening for your company yeah, so we had um, for us, it was a strategic access round. We we were able to get more of our customers uh, to participate in in the growth of, of the company as well. We actually had a, a, a an Oracle veteran join us as our chief revenue officer, who's also on our board now, Chris Small. Uh, it's been a delight to work with him. Uh, we've had uh, uh, Kirsten Wahlberg join our board. She was this uh, former CTO of DocuSign and a former CIO of Salesforce. So I think what you're seeing is is essentially building up uh, our, our go to market presence because our R&D team has and in our engineering team have essentially uh, built um, a platform that's leading to mar market leading um, uh, levels of accuracy. Now we have to essentially build a sales and marketing team to go ahead and, and, and try to get that absorbed by the market. So we have some exciting announcements uh, that we'll be starting in the first quarter timeframe uh, for, for, for some um, uh, new customers to the next version of the uh, platform that we've been working uh, on in the, in the last year. Great. I think this video can be part of your go to market. I'm really excited that you chose to stop by. If people want to learn more about Prion, where should they go? Um, sure. Our website's at prion.com, so P-R-Y-O-N as in nancy.com, and we'll have some uh, materials there for people to peruse and read about the first use cases that this platform is relevant to, and it is um, going to be leveraging uh, certain um, AI models that were trained on OCI behind the covers. Great. I will make sure to link that in the description of the video. Igor, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for having us.